What is going on guys? This is Trend Kill, and welcome back to my Elder Scrolls Online Tips and Tricks Guide for Beginners. So this is going to be part two of this series, and today we're going to talk about add-ons. Now, anybody who's played an MMO before, especially something like World of Warcraft, knows plenty about add-ons. And basically, these are things that are going to be installed, kind of, into your game, and they're going to add on to the experience or the UI or uh, whatever you've downloaded that add-on to do. So I'm going to show you a list of all the add-ons that I'm using. Um, you can see that you can, uh, once you've got these installed, once you've got these in the proper folder, you can click them or unclick them to enable or disable them in the game. So just because they're installed into your Elder Scrolls Online folders does not mean you're forced to use them. You don't have to go delete them out of the folder to take them out of your UI. So what I'm using is ESO Head, uh, and that's just like a base thing that you have to have to use other ESO Head things. So I have that downloaded for ESO Head Markers. Now before we move on, let's go ahead and show you what that does. ESO Head Markers is going to add a slew of information to your minimap. If you go over here to the Filters section, uh, I'm going to take everything off that is not normally there. So these aren't normally there, uh, the c uh, collected and uncollected sky shards aren't normally there, so this is how your map is normally going to look uh, inside the normal game. Well, what ESO Head Markers does is it's basically like Gatherer for World of Warcraft. So first off, it shows you all of the collected and uncollected sky shards that you may or may not have. Now, I've got all these, but I installed this afterwards, and I don't know, some, for some reason, uh, they didn't show up. Uh, a couple of these I don't have, but anyway, uh, regardless... It shows you all the collected and uncollected sky shards that you may or may not have on your map. Now, if you click un or if you unclick collected sky shards, basically these will show up on your map right here, uncollected dungeon sky shard found in soft dirt by daggers. These will show you that they're there until you collect them and then they'll go away. That's how I like to have it. Uh, but also what this does is when you find a chest, uh, and I can change the color so you guys can see it, when you find a chest in the world, it will add that to the map, and it, the reason it adds that to the map, and I'll put ore on here in red. Uh, I'll put clothing on here in green. The reason these are added to the map is because these nodes spawn every so often. So once somebody grabs that chest, eventually, several hours or minutes or something like that later, eventually that chest or that node will respawn. So all this mining stuff is right around a mountain. And once I gather that, that ore will eventually come back. And it's exactly how it was in World of Warcraft. So it's a common system to use uh, in MMOs. So I can add all this stuff, and every time I collect something, my map will then be littered with all of these things. So if I am an alchemist, or if I am a woodworker, I can go find these things later and gather that stuff again if I really need it. So this is a really cool add-on, and it gives you a lot of information. The best part about this is that it does give you access to find those sky shards. So if you're a sky shard hunter, the uh, ESO head markers is the way to go. Next on the list, we have... What do we have? I clicked the wrong button here. Uh, Foundry Tactical Combat. Now, this is an interesting one, and you've probably seen this in several of my videos. I'll hop on my horse and head outside and see if we can't get some footage of this. Uh, but the Foundry Tactical Combat is essentially like scrolling damage numbers or scrolling combat text um, in World of Warcraft, if you played that. And essentially what it does is it actually allows you to know how much damage you're doing when you attack something. So let me see if I can find an enemy of some sort. Okay, here actually, here's a, here's a mining node. So we're right here on the map. I know I don't think you can see my mouse cursor, but if I'm highlighting myself here with, uh, with the, the mouse, so trend tank is popping up. If I collect this ore, let me uh, get this ore here right quick. Uh, all right, so I collected that ore. If I go back to my map, now you can see. Let me get out of the way here. Now you can see on my map that that has placed an ore marker on my map, and that will forever stay there. And I'll always know if I ever need iron ore that there might be one right here. So run by and check it out. Let me see if I can find an enemy real quick. I'll show you the scrolling combat text. Uh, something's got to be around here somewhere, right? No, that's a person. Here's a mountain flower. We can collect that. Why not? That will uh, show up on our map now. So that's going to show up right here as an alchemy ingredient. You can see how that kind of works. Uh, is that an enemy? No, it's a rock. Uh, I could probably hit that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got a Betty Nitch. So I'm just going to walk up to it. You can see low stamina already flashing across the screen. It warns you when your stamina is low. It warns you when your ultimate is ready. But this is exactly what it does. So I'm going to hit this thing. 
So you can see it did 118 heavy attack and 12 frozen weapon damage. There's 118 heavy attack. Now over on the right, you can see that I took 12 damage. So let's try this again. There's 58 from my fiery grip. 19 from a frozen weapon, 49 from a light attack. Let's do another strong attack. 178 for my heavy attack. Over to the right, I took 12 damage, and it says target low health. So it gives you all the information for a fight that you may want. And I think that is a very, a very important add-on, especially for min-maxing, especially for late game. And it's just going to give you a lot of information that you wouldn't have if you didn't have that add-on. Now, in World of Warcraft, they actually added damage numbers later because the add-on was so popular. Another thing that the Foundry Tactical Tom Tombat, Foundry Tactical Combat does is you can see it's added this, uh, well, you can't really see, I can't mouse over it, but you can see it's added this different health mana and stamina bar. So my health, magicka, and stamina over to the left under Trend Tank where it says 20, right to the right of my chat, that is new, and that is condensed. It's easier to understand. It tells me the percentage of my health that I'm at, and it also tells me the exact number of my Magicka health and stamina that I'm at. Not to mention, when my health gets low, or my Magicka gets low, uh, let's see if I can run my Magicka out, it's going to tell me, hey, low Magicka. You see that floating across the screen. If I, uh, you know, run around uh, until my stamina gets low, you'll see that it says low stamina, which you've seen, which you've seen, you have saw earlier. So it also... Let me see if I can, there's low stamina. So here's Ikum. You can see over to the right, Ikum has a health bar. It shows me that Ikum has 330 health and they are at 100% of their health. So it also shows your target's health, which is uh, essential for things like this. Like I've got 148, dam or 148 health here. I'm going to hit you one time and I'm going to kill you. I didn't mean to kill you in that first hit, but I did. I have an ice weapon, so you shattered into pieces. Let's see if I can do like some damage here. All right, so now they're at 90 health. I know if I do an, a, a small attack, which does 57 damage, it's going to almost kill them. So I know when I can do a small attack and when I can do a large attack. So let me see if I can get something here. Uh, let's try to dash this guy. No, I killed you. Shit, these things are too low level. First world problems. Let's try to do this. That killed you too. Well, son of a bitch. All right, so this guy's at 90 health. I know I will not kill him with a soft attack, so I need to do a heavy attack. And I killed him with my heavy attack because it's 180 damage. So anyway, it kind of allows you to pay attention and see what abilities you need to do next uh, so that you can kind of know where to go. A lot of time talking about the Foundry Tactical Combat, but that is my favorite one that I've got so far. Uh, let's go into add-ons here. Inventory item borders. This is a very simple one. I don't think it's necessary. But over to my left here, you can see how the item borders on all these are green and all these are blue. That is because... Um, I have this inventory item borders. What that does is says, oh, this is a blue item. I'm going to outline it in blue so that you know if I were to drop a blue helmet, it's more than likely going to be better than my green helmet. If I were to drop blue shoulders, it's more than likely going to be better than the green shoulders that I'm using. So at a quick glance, I can see that's probably an upgrade for me. And that's just something that's really simple that you don't have to have, but I like. It makes it a little easier for me to understand my item situation. Uh, another add-on that I like is loot drop. Uh, by Pocket or I don't know by whoever uh, watch down in the bottom lower right hand corner uh, basically if you don't have let's show you without auto loot here I'm gonna turn my settings off, or my uh, auto loot settings off if you don't have auto loot on a window pops up and it says hey there's the stuff that's here do you want to take this stuff you can say take all or just take certain things out of it I'm gonna say take all in the bottom right hand corner you see insect parts popped up what? You're saying that's fucking stupid. You just saw that you took insect parts. You're right. Under normal circumstances, that's pretty stupid. However, uh, when I turn on auto loot, which makes your looting and your gameplay much faster because it automatically loots those things. All right, we kind of walked into an elite zone there, so apologies for the, uh, the thing. Here's a wormwood. I'm going to take this. This is what auto loot does. So I don't get the window that pops up. It just, boom, goes into my inventory. Well, without this, uh, without this add-on that makes it pop up in the right-hand corner, I would have had no clue what I just got. I could have gotten something really cool, or I could have just gotten regular old wormwood. So that tells me exactly what I've gotten uh, instead of, you know, having to just kind of guess. So auto-loot, if you're going to use auto-loot, that is an essential add-on. Make sure you get the uh, loot drop. Multi-quest tracker is what you're going to see over in the top, uh, top right-hand corner. That is all of my quests that uh, I've got currently that I'm tracking. I can go into my quests at any given time uh, and I can unclick those and it will take them off of that list. So oh, these are some great quests that are uh, that are bugged out right now that you can't complete. But 
those are the quests that I have to do. Now, the cool thing about it is when you hit T, you cycle through your quest. So here, my, my current quest, if you look up at the compass, is talk to Guildmaster Sees All Colors. So that's the one that is highlighted. If I hit T, it cycles to another quest. That quest being go to the Harbridge. Well, before, you had no clue which one you were following uh, as far as the name of the quest was. Well, with multi-quest tracker, if you watch the uh, Chasing Shadows, go to the Harbridge, the very bottom quest over that list over to the top right. If I hit T, my marker follows to Banishing the Banished, Fine Keeper Arlder. So if I go here, Fine Keeper Arlder is uh, my active quest, and that shows me exactly which quest I'm on. So if somebody goes, hey, which quest are you on? I don't have to say, yeah, I'm on the one where you find Keeper Arlder. And they're like, oh, fuck, which one's that? I can tell them it's Banishing the Banished. So it's an easy way at a quick glance to see exactly which quest you're on. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we've got ZR Minimap. Now, you guys have probably, you're probably seeing the minimap up here to the left of the compass. That is not normally there. That is an add-on. So, a lot of people complain, uh, Goobkill is one that complains, oh, there's no minimap, it's hard to get used to. Well, there's an add-on that gives you a minimap that shows you, okay, if I head this direction, I'll head to a way shrine. Uh, so I'm gonna walk this way, and we'll eventually, we'll walk into a way shrine. And, uh, there it is. It finally popped up on our compass. So this gives you an ability to see things from a distance that you wouldn't normally see on the compass because you're not close enough yet. Uh, so if you like a minimap, ZR minimap is a very good place to start. So those are the ones I'm using. I'm not saying those are the best ones or those are the only ones that you should be using. There are more that you can use. And uh, I'm going to jump out of game real quick, show you the website where I downloaded these, show you how to download it, and I'm going to show you how to install them so that you can get in and uh, start using some of these add-ons. So I will be right back. Alright, so we are back. We are here on ESOUI.com. This is where you're going to be downloading the add-ons from. So you can do one of two things. You can either search here in the uh, search bar, obviously, or you can go to the standalone add-ons kind of filtered list here. So if I wanted to, say, go to, um, let's download the mini-map one, right? So map, chords, and compasses is probably where it's going to be. Uh, I can scroll down. Here's ZR mini-map. This is the one I'm using. Here's also ESO head markers. So let's go to ZR Minimap. We're going to click it. Not that. That's the picture. We're going to click the link over here. That's going to take us to the ZR Minimap page. We can click the download button here and download it. It will download as a RAR or a zip file. You'll have to unzip it into a folder. So uh, we can also, let's go back and search. Say we want to search for Foundry Tactical Combat. So we're going to search for Foundry and boom, Foundry Tactical Combat right here. It's going to allow you to download it. And actually, this has been updated since I've installed it, so I may want to check that shit out. Uh, so anyway, you just click download. Again, it will download as a RAR, and uh, you can then install it into your folder. Now, give me one second again, and we'll switch over to the folder that you're going to put these in. All right, so here we are. I've got my add-ons folder open. I've got Foundry Tactical Combat downloaded. I've got it open in WinRAR, and I'm ready to rock. So first off, let's talk about where you're going to put these in. Uh, my computer, Windows, whatever your C drive or whatever drive you have it installed to. Users, your name, mine happens to be Trendkill. My documents, Elder Scrolls Online, live add-ons. That folder will be blank if you have not installed any add-ons yet. If you have add-ons installed, you can see here that I've got all of the add-ons that I have installed listed here. So once you have your Foundry Tactical Combat or whatever add-on that you decide to download, uh, downloaded, and you have it opened in WinRAR, it is this simple. Drag and drop. Now, of course, it's already in here, so it's asking me, do I want to replace it? I'm going to say yes, do this, blah, 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 yes, do all that. So bam, that is installed. Now, if you noticed during the gameplay portion of this video, I had inventory grid view on my add-ons list. I just had it unclicked because I didn't like it. You know how to uninstall it? Boom. Hit delete. Yes, I am done. It is installed and uninstalled that simply. So if you guys are playing the game, you're like, man, I really wish this game had a mini-map or scrolling combat text or any of the things that you liked from previous MMOs that were uh, included with other add-ons or happen to be included later in the game that this game doesn't have yet, there's got to be an add-on for it because everybody else is just like you. They're like, man, I wish I had that. I used to have that in World of Warcraft or Guild Wars or whatever MMO I used to play, and I need that in this game. There's more than likely an add-on for it. 
So real quick, before we end, I'm going to go back into the game and show you how you can move those around. It's extremely simple, but when you install these, it just kind of throws them in random places. And I want to make sure you know that you can move them around completely freely. So give me one second. I'll be right back again. All right, so here we are back in the game. I want to make sure you guys know that you can move some of these add-ons around. Basically, once you start uh, a new game up, your like multi-quest track will be like here, like chilling in the middle of the screen, and that obviously doesn't make for good gameplay. It's like, boom, hey, look at me. I'm like fucking right up in your way. Your uh, mini-map, I believe, will be like up here. Uh, so that kind of sucks because when you're in a party, your party's listed below this. So essentially what you want to do is enter free mouse bow by hitting period. Or you can hit your escape key to open up your menu and you can then move these around freely. So if anything's in your way, uh, you can move those uh, just by hitting your escape key and dragging it around or going into free mouse bow by hitting period. Another thing that this allows you to do, especially on this mini map one, is you can see once I'm in free mouse mode, I can now drag this out if I want to. I don't want to because that's the size I had it. That's the size I wanted it. But if I wanted to, I could drag this out. So you can fill spots and gaps in your UI by taking this and saying, okay, if I wanted this to be exactly the size of my compass to my party, I could drag it out that direction and then drag it out this direction and boom, there's my map. Now again, I don't want that. That is far too big for my screen. So I'm gonna drag it back down to about where it was and plop it in the middle between where my party's gonna pop up and where my compass is at. And that's just how I have it. I think SNK has his over here. That might be a better place to put it. I don't know. That's up to you. Actually, I do just by looking at that now. I kind of like that better. So I'm going to leave it there. Ha! <laughs> Learn something new every day. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully, this has kind of opened your eyes to some of the changes that you can make. And what I've done is not all. There's a lot more add-ons out there that will do a lot more things. And, uh, like, there's a piggy bank add-on that every time you visit your bank, it deposits 10% of your gold into your bank. And it's a kind of like a savings account. It kind of like uh, it accrues interest every time you visit your bank. So that's not a bad idea um, if you're a spender and you need, to, and you need help saving money. Uh, but regardless... That's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I will be making more beginner tips and tricks, guys. So stay tuned for those. I've still got a list of things. And actually, a couple people have added some things to that list that I want to make sure I touch on that beginners may or may not know. So stay tuned for those guides, guys. These are a lot of fun to make, and hopefully they're teaching you guys something. If you have any questions or any other add-ons that you want to mention, please leave that stuff in the comment section below, and I will do my best to talk about that in future videos or answer those questions. And until next time, guys, I will see you later. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. Peace out.